Well, welcome back to Key Point on TV3. We're live on 3FM 92.7, also on TV3 Ghana on Facebook and DSV Channel 279. We're all across the world on 3news.com. So many of your messages we'll get into. And uh, we're live on Facebook and also on YouTube. So you can watch us on all these across the world. Um, and talk about 3FM 92.7. There's a family fun day. Um, tomorrow, the fifth the, sorry on monday monday which is a holiday the 5th of august at the gazebo accra parks jowalu and so please call these numbers if you would want to take part in this family fund day out because we're all going to be there zero five three one one zero zero nine two seven zero five three one one zero zero nine two seven or zero five three two two zero zero nine two seven zero five three two two zero Zero nine two seven. That's a three FM family fun day out. Now, uh, lawyer Yabwabi and Samoa, uh, we in the studio. Before we went for that quick break, was, uh, on this ambulance spare parts deal that some of the to Black has been talking about. Also, that will segue into another ambulance case, but this time around, mm -hmm. the appeals court has acquitted and discharged Dr. Kessler, two forces the minority leader, and also Richard Jagba in this ongoing ambulance case, essentially terminating the trial at the High Court. There are some matters to it. Th thankfully, we have in studio one of the lawyers of Dr. Kessler, two forces, who is also the director of legal for the NDC. Do you know, lawyer, Edwin Eduji Tamaklo. I nearly said honorable. Let's go to Parliament. Good morning. It's good to have you join us. Thank you. It's been you. it's been long. Thank you, Alfred. It's, it's been long indeed. <laughs> no, no, I don't do um, uh, key points, but usually I do Mondays indeed, indeed. with my senior on the the new day. Yes. And you had been heckling and intimidating me yes. any time uh, we we we, <laughs> we, 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 we meet on that show <laughs> i just want to register my protest using your platform last week protest protest <laughs> protest <laughs> protest accepted and acknowledged late. no he said he came late last week he had the privilege the good <laughs> fortune of my being late he got away with it <laughs> acknowledged indeed but congratulations is in order i think thank that you. Um, thank you yes even though uh, my, this can be described a, a good as a good my me being led by my senior my people master uh, Dr. Aziz Bamba, Mr. Tadio, sorry for Richie Jackma and the others. It's, it's, uh, we worked together mm. as a team and we thank God for the outcome. Very well. Even though this has been described as a, a temporary <laughs> victory. Uh, because yeah, <laughs> the Attorney General has indicated his, um, the willingness, in fact, the decision to appeal this at the Supreme Court. But, uh, but you know, you know, no, quick uh, one. Uh, uh, just, uh, uh, no, just 30 seconds. You know, when the attorney general said he will appeal, then I recall vividly 2011. Mm -hmm. You remember uh, Oseje, mm -hmm. Foreign Affairs, yeah. and Danjima. Yes. You know, in 2019, they were being prosecuted for courting financial laws. Yes. And so the matter went to the high courts. The High Court judge ordered them to open their defense, and then they appealed to the Court of Appeal mm -hmm. on the submission of no case ruling. The Court of Appeal set aside the order for them to rule. Incidentally, it was Godfrey and Senior Johnson who were lawyers for them. At that time, that judgment was not perverse. We will deal with it when Indeed. we proceed. We will deal, deal with it. And but <laughs> if, if listening to to, to all the matters that Ukujeto Ablakwa brought up, mm -hmm. for me, the question I ask is about whether the Auditor General, after arranging all of these fundamental concerns, there is some basis for the special prosecutor's investigation into this matter. That is where I want to take off from. Yes, please. And to commend the Honorable Okujetu Ablakwa, but the question you ask 
is germane to the processes that happen. And mm. IDG has even strengthened my the posture point. on that. Mm. Look, until we have a political leader in this country who is prepared to break the cycle of corruption and the community of interest on all sides in corruption, we will continue to recycle these issues. Because what do we have? A deficit of incumbency accountability. You are now asking me if the Auditor General has basis. What more do we need? Do we need? But it, because it's related to the incumbent government, nothing much will happen. Nothing much then, will happen? Yes, it won't happen. You don't then, have confidence when, in the when, special no, prosecutor it, to do It's not about the, the, even the special prosecutor. It's processes and otherwise. It, it's a culture that we've developed. That's why I'm saying that until we have a political leadership that is not beholden to that corruption, that community of interest in sustaining the corruption, we will struggle. Because incumbents get away with it. And when you attack opposition people, you say it's witch hunting. Mm -hmm. So when you assume that oh, uh, once uh, the incumbent is out of power, you are going to go forward and retrieve or collect or whatever, what happens? Cases drag on for several years and nothing happens. And let me, let me illustrate. Mm -hmm. And I'm not here to equalize. I'm serious. This is a continuing effort and it's going to kill all of us if we don't resolve it. If we don't fight corruption genuinely. This is the economic and financial policies for the medium term. Republic of Ghana. It's a report to the World Bank delivered by the government of Ghana dated 14th April 2014. Mm -hmm. Paragraph 97 on page 22, 14th April. And listen to it. This is the government of Ghana writing to the World Bank. It says, and I'll read, noting that most fraud and corruption occurs in the award and execution of government funded contracts. This is the government of Ghana. Noting that most fraud and corruption occurs in the award and execution of government funded contracts. Government will publish, quotation marks, guidelines on preventing and combating fraud and corruption in government contracts. Quotations closed. I'll repeat that. Mm -hmm. Government will publish, quotation marks, guidelines on preventing and combating fraud and corruption in government contracts. Quotations closed. Mm -hmm. These guidelines shall be annexed to all public tender documents. I see and associated contracts, both at the national and decentralized levels, and shall be the basis of any sanctions if fraud or corruption is detected in the award or execution of any public funded contracts. Additionally, a blacklist of offending vendors will be established, and such individuals and institutions shall be debarred in accordance with relevant laws from all government funded contracts throughout the country. Paragraph 98, very short one. Mm -hmm. As a way of regulating the behavior of public office holders, government has completed and launched the Code of Ethics for Public Office Holders. This code is expected to provide guidance to officers in matters such as conflict of interest and abuse of office. Okay. An infraction with any provisions of the code will attract sanctions based on relevant institutional laws. 2014. I see. We are still struggling to deal with, with corruption in government associated contracts. And it's a clearly established cycle. It's okay. What happens? It's a very clear pattern. Government comes in, loans, grants are secured literally for everything we do. Mm -hmm. Governments don't pay attention to mobilization of local resources. Everything to do with the potential socioeconomic development or transformation of the people is based on loans and grants sourced from outside. Mm -hmm. Provision of water, school buildings, roads, feeder roads, highways, everything. Now, diaries. Then what happens? The money is siphoned out of government accounts through sole sourcing, rigged, procurement processes, and judgment debts. That's the bottom line. So it's a cycle. It's a cycle. It's a cycle. Government comes in, government borrows, 
takes loans, small, small loans, take grants, take everything with the pretext of going to invest those monies in provision of socioeconomic services mm -hmm. and to boost activities. So everything that we do, government is babysitting us. Government provides the roads. Government provides the hospitals. Okay. Government provides the schools. Government provides the water. Government provides electricity. Government provides everything on the assumption that it's supposed to take care of all of us. Government never attempts to raise money elsewhere except through these loans, grants, and otherwise. Mm -hmm. Its taxes end up being consumed in the process where the taxes are barely enough to do anything mm -hmm. for yes. that matter. So what happens to these loans and grants? The next step after procuring these loans and with beautifully crafted documents, and I'll show you how beautifully crafted the documents are. The monies are siphoned. Okay. I won't say dissipated, siphoned, deliberately siphoned through sole sourcing. Because why would you sole source diaries? What, what is desperate about diaries that you sole source diaries? And, and, and procurements that by the time the procurement documents are published in the newspapers, mm -hmm. is being awarded behind the scenes. Right. Tender committee processes are rigged. And then in the end, you have judgment deaths where government actively shops for people it owes and, and pays money out to them. Now, the continuum of that cycle is that it tends to be companies which are manned by politically exposed persons mm -hmm. with eight year life types. Yes. So as soon as the government comes in, people run to establish these companies. And then uh, 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 by the eight year period, mm -hmm. whatever uh, uh, dust, rubbish, everything that will happen has happened. And either the people have disappeared into the sunset with their monies, <laughs> or they linger on uh, in funny court cases that never come to. And there are many. What have you? What you mean? I saw for tune, suba, uh, 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 city and country waste. Our our governance uh, 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 landscape is littered with this. You come to the current one, frontiers. How can a company be working in the international airport of Ghana and no public in, o, o, official is able to tell us where the contract controlling that uh, 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 operation in the airport is during COVID? You have the Sputnik uh, COVID procurements, SML, the Kelvin G, VG, all manner of things. Uh, street hotels, uh, uh, ambulances. Now, air moving equipment. We are being told that we should be happy that government is going to distribute air moving equipment throughout the country. Who procured them? At what cost? How are they going to be maintained? How are they going to be run? Who is going to be accountable? Are they now going to take another amount of money, the loan that is equal to the money they used to procure them to pretend to service them and maintain them? Like we two was saying, by now you may know if you have 307 ambulances, and yet a, a, a procurement mm -hmm. deal is being signed to procure spare parts for 307 ambulances. What about those that have crashed? What about those that are still roadworthy? You are servicing 307 at the same cost across board. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, you don't have the same uh, quantity. So these cycles continue. We are the sole commissioner. At the height of the public indignation at these issues, judgment debts and otherwise. Mm -hmm. A sole commissioner was appointed to look into some of these public debts. Right. What happened to the sole commissioner's uh, uh, report? So let me read another thing to you. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Well, I'm saying that there is this level of impunity mm -hmm. and I don't care it. And, and while, while we actually, in fact, let me Adam just say that there's something that we are monitoring, uh, which we're going to put out. Okay. Uh, but so, please. Yes. You speak. Mm. Okay. Then I want you to. So, 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 okay. so, when you go to November 23, 2013, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. listen, the Public Interest and Accountability Committee, which is looking after our oil monies, mm -hmm. it said that in the 2012 budget, 100 million cities was allocated to expenditure and amortization of loans for oil and gas. 232 million to road and infrastructure. 72 million to agricultural modernization. And listen, 112 million to capacity building. 112 million. And that word, watch it carefully, mm -hmm. capacity building. It means monies to be shared and spent on workshops and first class things. travel. And 
and all that. Now, mm -hmm. this same monitor had been allocated this way already. This is the way it was dispersed. 113 million allocated to administration, out of which 65 million was allocated to Office of Government Machinery, mm -hmm. 5 million to Parliament, 15 million to local government ministry, 130 million to Ministry of Energy, 70 million to Ministry of Transport, 22 million to Ministry of Sports. Mm -hmm. The monies were not spent for the purposes they were allocated. And this is a recurring thing. It cuts across the different administrations. Mm -hmm. So what we are saying, because you are in a hurry, uh, 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 it's unfortunate I'm not able to uh, conclude effectively. What I'm saying is that mm -hmm. this organized pattern mm -hmm. of impunity and corruption can Stop. only be broken by a leadership that is not beholden to any of the parties. Mm -hmm. Because the parties are entrenched machines that have an interest in managing and maintaining these corrupt activities. Because right. they have that clear cycle. And they will always implement the cycle. They will scream when they are in opposition, and they will chop when they are in government. Mm. Know. You know, you know yeah. this morning, mm. and, and, this and, morning, and, listening to my learned senior mm -hmm. reminds me of the experiences of um, Saul. When he was the prosecutor, <laughs> saw the persecutor, saw the lawyer, mm. when he was <laughs> doing all the... I remember yeah. some of the yes. um, press okay. releases from him when he was director of I communication. I was director of communication. And, and no, I'm, I'm just yes. saying of that the MPP. in yes. all of this, in all of this, yeah. he had not recounted the things that were signed and issued by him. I am happy of the change in hearts, change in It disposition. is not personal. It is, and, you don't try and personalize no, this. I'm it not is a system. I'm only it's a systemic that. system. I'm saying that. I see, would see, have issued you press release. You know, you know, you it know is why. a system. No, you know why. It is happening okay. during just, the NDC. Right. You know, it is right. happening during the MPP. Okay. Okay. Do you know None why? of the parties you know why? is exempt. That's when why. I listen to it my is not personal. When I listen to my learned senior, do you know why I was a bit worried? Because, you see, his previous life, he was seriously an anti-corruption crusader. And have I changed? No, well, hold on. <laughs> then, if you want to make it personal, I want to assure you that then as in I sit here, I'm not corrupt. <laughs> okay, I no, will not be no, corrupt. No, 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 and no, I will no, never no, take no. something that has no, not been no, no, no. I know. Uh, I don't I have that record. I'm platform. a man of integrity. <laughs> On this platform, yes. I cannot say I have any evidence that you have engaged in any corrupt act. I am just looking at how spirited you are and okay. the consistency. Because and I I'm believe saying that in, the in your previous state. life, you were an anti-corruption crusader. Okay. Yes. Then you came to power as special assistant to the then vice president, may he so rest in peace, Ali Mahama. Mm -hmm. And subsequently, I've read your press releases. I am only worried that would you remain with that consistency and not change from your anti-corruption crusader when you get, uh, came to government, subsequently becoming director of communication. That's my only worry. Okay. I cannot make any claim. Yeah, well, he, I says, can he, says, he, he says, says he is as I am focused, he is focused, I am focused on, that. on helping am, to build genuine well, integrity well. in this country. Perfect. Therefore, if institutions don't stand up, individuals like oh, what Okuja Tu is trying to mm. do, only fall flat. Perfect. Institutions must, must stand, stand up. up. Quality institutions, Indeed. and, and we will come to that. And I will state the kind of institutions that Mr. Chamati intends to build. Rightly so. And it's uh, some twenty-five minutes top of the hour, and this point you just made leads us to this. This is what happened in Parliament on Tuesday after the appeals court ruling on this case, Lato Forcing and also uh, Richard Jakba being acquitted and discharged by the appeals court. How I this to, to, to say for and on behalf of the minority in Parliament, we'll hear from the majority leader as well, Alexander Penyomarkin. Take a look. the momentous decision of Ghana's Court of Appeal on a terminal end 
to the political persecution of the minority. Yeah. Uh, people, by a two-one decision, the Court of Appeal upheld that the decision by the High Court for him to proceed with a submission of his case had no legal basis and therefore did not only discharge him but acquitted him. Yeah. That is what we are celebrating and he's invited to celebrate this. Now Mr. Speaker, I hear, I hear the Attorney General even instead of swallowing his humble pride, is saying that he wants to uh, uh, litigate on this matter. Mr. Speaker, we assure him that he will be better disgraced because this matter, this matter, if you want to try people, try them on matters which are legally... That's General Boarin Idris, a former minority leader. Uh, let me see if we have that, a good connection to lawyer Martin Pebo now. Counsel, good morning. If you, thank you for joining us again. Okay, we'll, we'll, lawyer Martin Pebo, can you hear us? Yeah, I can. Perfect. Good thank morning. You. Good morning. Thank you so much for the Good. questions. We earlier had a, a little yeah. uh, problem with the connection. Thank you for joining us, Lawyer Martin Pebo. Um, is, is out of the jurisdiction, so he's joining us on Zoom. But let's hear from the, uh, Alexander Penyomakin as well, who my is a majority started, leader. My, my, my senior started. It is uh, vacation this uh, Martin, yeah. <laughs> it bring us something back. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Ah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said he said it. Mm -hmm. no. Now that the details have been made known to me, <laughs> I would want to say that it's a day to celebrate the tradition. <laughs> yes, Mr. Speaker, except that, Mr. Speaker, we have to be very consistent as a political class in our celebration of the judiciary. Mr. Speaker, I agree with the position taken by the Honorable Harry Nutrition. No executive arm of government can manipulate the judiciary arm of the realm. Mr. Speaker, it must never be said, never be said, that the judiciary is under the control of the executive. Mr. Speaker, we, we, Harry, Honorable Harry Nebrisu, is a courtroom practitioner, just as I am. You were a courtroom practitioner. One of the things that we were taught at the bar was to accept the decisions of the court. And when we are not happy, we should go up. And that is how we enrich the law. So I think that in his celebration, he shouldn't use this as a forum to attack the Attorney General who has no right of audience here. Well, says he congratulates uh, Dr. Kesela to force in for this victory. That's Alessandra Penyo Markin there. Well, the Attorney General has also indicated he's going to appeal this. But let's take you through the timelines of this ambulance trial. Started for January 2022. Dr. Kesela Tofosin, businessman Richard Jakba, and former chief director of the Ministry of Health, Sylvester Anemana, slapped with multiple charges, including causing financial loss to the state. And also, March 2023, the High Court ordered all three accused persons to open their defense after it found that prosecution has made a case against them. All three proceeded to challenge that ruling at the Court of Appeal. So it is this ruling on, on March, that's in the month of March 2023, for these three persons to open their defense that now was appealed and then the ruling given. March 2024, the Attorney General discontinued the case against uh, Dr. Amenama <clears throat> for a number of reasons. He's out of the country. July 2024, the Court of Appeal as we do know now, set aside this High Court ruling on the submission of no case. And look, we'll give you 
this is the Attorney General indicating that his intention to, to appeal this ruling. He says that the decision of the Court of Appeal gr is grossly unfair to the nation and inimical to the fight against impunity and abuse in the public office. The office will promptly file an appeal in order to erase what is described as uh, th this ruling. And portions of some of the words he used in the statement that was issued is what has got a number of uh, people also reacting to it that to the extent that he is the head of the, the leader of the bar, using words such as considering the decision of the Court of Appeal to be perverse in the quest for public accountability and the rule of law, says the decision clearly is heavily against the weight of cogent evidence led by the prosecution in substantiation of all the charges against the accused persons at the trial. Leah Martin, I'll start off with you on this matter because uh, consistently you have indicated, that's after the May 23rd, I wish, I wish, I wish, okay. yes, me... just, just after the, the May 23rd um, revelation maybe, maybe that running. some mm -hmm. conversation had taken place between the Attorney General and Richard Jakpa, Richard Jakpa indicating that he was talking to the AG at very odd hours. You had indicated this case should have been discontinued a long time ago. Now this development, how does it strike you, quickly? Yeah, so good morning once again to uh, Guy Mante. Let me greet Kentucky, uh, take you to a second, right? And Don mm -hmm. and also Chief Justice Sophia Kupu, uh, Yas Antwa, Yas Antwa is returned. She says she doesn't see any hope in the eyes of the youth, right? Yes. I hope the president is listening. After all the grandstanding that he will provide jobs, jobs, jobs. He sees now the youth are despondent. There's nothing for the youth. Okay? All right. So uh, the quick thing about this uh, decision is that, yes, it's a welcome relief. Uh, locally, we'll say, Abu Zige, right? Because, you know, the trial judge had disappointed us. This tip was enough. AG's damning uh, revelations in the tape were enough to stop the trial. But the trial judge failed to stop the trial. And so the Court of Appeal decision is uh, I mean, stellar. It's the, more or less the savior. Yes, that decision has saved us the embarrassment. Because why in this world will you see an attorney general do such a despicable thing, all the things he did in the tape, and the judge countenanced it and was giving some explanations here and there. It doesn't affect the case. I'm like, what? Really? So the Court of Appeal has done the right thing. There's no way in this world. Nobody will countenance this level of depravity that the uh, uh, Attorney General exhibited in the, in, in the team. So it's good the Court of Appeal has ended all of this so that we can save the embarrassment. The court cannot be used for a witch hunt. You can't use the court processes to persecute your enemies, no matter how bad the facts of a case may look like. If a court sees evidence that is for a political vendetta, the court has to stop the trial. After all, in this case, they could have taken an adjournment. The attorney general could have gone for the money, could have recalled back Big C that he uh, sent away out of a lack of judgment. So there could have been indications so that once the tip was coming out, they'll give him a long adjournment so that he would engage Big C, get back the money, and then the trial will be stopped. Right, the AG has, the AG has been responding that. to that, that position that, that you just made, that he could have gone in for the money when Big C came in um, to, to, to want to pay the, the, the said monies involved in this transaction. He said the manner in which the plea bargaining to pay that this amount, as you refer to, came from Big C or was made, he said it was made by a party which was not, in fact, a, someone who was not party to the case or a company that was not party to the case as was proceeding to the extent that they were not directly a party to this case as a Big C. If they had, for instance, defaulted upon any agreement for a plea bargaining, how was he, as the Attorney General, going to hold 
Big C responsible, since they were not party to the case that was going on? Oh, listen. <laughs> Let me tell you. Mr. Kansi, everything he said there is hogwash. Absolute hogwash. Listen, uh, uh, let's not make a mistake. We are all lawyers. So we are all lawyers. It's not as if the attorney general is the only lawyer. Let me show you. You don't always have to use only the plea bargaining law. There is a general law they use in the attorney general's department. There is a handbook. His power to prosecute is not subject to the plea bargaining act. No. He has a power to prosecute. And he has a power to file nolly prosecute, right? The plea bargaining act only comes in partially. But it doesn't circumscribe the whole of that power. So once Big C is not a party, he was not going to use the <clears throat> plea bargaining act. Big C didn't come to plea for anything. Big C was dealing with him as attorney general, so he was not bound to use plea bargaining. As attorney general, he can look at the public interest in the case and stop the case. The plea bargaining act doesn't stop him. It doesn't stop him. Plea I bargaining see. is for parties to a case. And so if you are not a party to a case, you can still deal with the attorney general under his general powers. So that prosecutor's manual they have, they will tell you that uh, I have portions of it. Maybe there isn't time. Let's see if I can read portions. Mm -hmm. But it tells you, prosecutor's manual, and that manual was developed when Marietta Blue appeared upon was uh, attorney general. And even without the manual, it was still law. But I'm saying that the manual further states it. But, you know, I before see. the manual, they hand over the law to you in a, what you call orally, and then some of the court decisions. In that manual, they are saying prosecutor's manual. So you can check with any prosecutor in the attorney general's chambers. They will tell you, I have copies of it. I will see. Let me make the point. If there's mm -hmm. time, then we'll read. So it tells you that there can be a treasure trove of evidence, no matter what, right? So there's evidence to support a case. But when you analyze the case and you see that there is public interest in not prosecuting, yes, you can stop it. And it's not only in Ghana. Every, I, I mean, most developed countries. And you know, that manual was developed, is the British who helped us, the Crown Prosecution Service. is the British who helped us. If you want to understand that manual more, you can interview Alex Sebefia. Mm -hmm. He used to be a big man in the Crown Prosecution Service. He was a big shot there. So I'm sure he knows about how, when he was uh, in the Crown Prosecution Service cases, right. they didn't prosecute, etc. So you let the British come, they help us to develop this manual, and then you throw it into the dustbin. In a case where you're saying that you don't like the vans, the seller says, I'm ready to pay for the vans. Then you say, no, you are not a party to the case. I'm telling you that what the attorney general said is hogwash. It was just part of that political uh, vendetta. So he'll be trying to put himself in the plea bargaining act when nobody has told him that it's only the plea bargaining act he can use to stop the case. So please, let it not be said anywhere that we couldn't have taken that money. Where this case is going... If Godfrey Dami doesn't get back to Big C to collect this money, I'm telling you, January next year, he himself, we are going to make a case against him. He will stand prosecution. He's going to stand trial for causing financial loss if he doesn't collect this money before he leaves office. Uh, now, I see. Let people so say, you're, you're your saying that back. you're going to take on AG Godfrey Dami, you, you sue him for causing financial loss to the state, for rejecting this money from Big C to, to pay off? Absolutely. Why? Yes, we'll make a case. He would stand criminal prosecution. So if Godfrey Dami knows what is good for him, he should better get back to Big C and try to engage them so that he takes the money back. Or then they should go and fix the ambulances. Let's see that they are in good order. If not, everything is on his head. Everything rises and falls on Godfrey Dami's head. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. Because we I can't see. allow that. Why? If he doesn't know the law, in any event, we've even said that he should get out of that office. So far, he's shown that he's not capable. See, you can win mm -hmm. some cases, but the ones that require real judgment, like this case, you see that he's been faltering all over. He's been all over the place, showing that no, he doesn't have what it takes to be an attorney general. He's just a partisan hatchet. Yes, a coup for says try and get uh, a two off. Uh, I mean, like get him into jail so that we we'll go and do party primaries. That was all that he understood. So even when the dynamics were changing, he didn't know that. Oh, let me tell a coup for do that. Listen, this thing it won't work. Let's just. Uh, listen, retrace our steps. Let's collect the money and close the case. No, he was just heedless. Boss says I should go on. The tape says it all. So the main point about this case is that if Dami doesn't collect this money, or if they don't go ahead and clear the ambulances and do everything for us to be sure that we have value for money, at the end of the day, next year by this time, it's Godfrey Dami who will be standing trial for causing financial loss. He and I see. And this is a case that you will take up. You you absolutely you, will, you will see, pursue this case. Apart from the Sicilia Dapa, Mr. Kansi, let me okay. ask. Apart from the Sicilia Dapa matter we filed in court, there are other ones we are preparing. In the next few weeks, you will see other cases in court. You'll be shocked. We are not joking. This country belongs to all of us. Godfrey Dam is not the only lawyer. He can't twist the law for partisan purposes. You will see, there's one coming in the next few weeks. You will see how it will pan out. You, you are going to see you, Godfrey Dami, in the next few weeks. Now, that, that one, look, let me mention it's about the SML matter. I yes, see. Attorney General, all of them, yeah. Interesting, we'll, we'll wait for that. And uh, something yeah. that will keep tabs on. These are the highlights of this case. And like, did you tell Maclo is one, one of the lawyers for Dr. Kessler, two forces in the minority leader. It was a 2-1 majority decision. The majority consisting of Justice Kweku Akabuafo, Justice Philip Bright Mensa, and the dissenting opinion, Justice Alex Pokwechampo. We have highlights of all these justices ruling on this matter, or their position on this matter. And it would interest you, some, some detail that they put out there. Let's go to the next. Essentially, we know the summary of this case. Next. And then, now... Finally, we do know the High Court, the decision set aside, Dr. Kessler to force Richard Jagba acquitted and discharged. You were in court, lawyer like Dujita Maklo. Were you expecting this outcome? Okay, so once again, good morning to your viewers. Right from the beginning, it was going to be a journey of nowhere. From January 2022? Look, this matter... What you do not know is that it started November 2017. So November 2017, Speaker Okwe then sent a letter to my client that he's needed at Yoko. But at force. Yes. So November 2017, led by my senior, Dr. Ayene, mm -hmm. we accompanied him to Yoko. At the Yoko premises, we went to the deputy executive director, Nanenchi, if uh, the name... So when we went there, he said, look, he's investigating this matter, referred to him by Ministry of Health, mm -hmm. and they needed our assistance. So when we got there, he said, ah, Honorable, you're a person of interest. Can you tell us the role you played? Then he said, look, on the seventh day of August 2014, as a deputy minister, I wrote this letter on behalf of my boss and copied him and the Minister of Health, requesting that the LC be set up. Prior to that, the Attorney General has advised us that they have received an intention to sue by Big C, and that if we don't set up the LC and Big C goes to court, we won't have any legitimate defense. So on the basis, my boss said, okay, let BOG set up the LC, then we can take it out from there. The next letter I wrote was on the 12th of August that if the LC is set up, bank charges by BOG should be taken. 12th of August, which year? 2017. 2014. 2014. Okay. 2014. Mm -hmm. 
Now, from 2014 until November, that Yoko invited us. Atufosi was never called again in respect of this transaction, having written those two letters. Nothing. So now, get something. When we went in November, the Yoko official said, if this is the only role you play, then you take the police form and go home, fill it, and bring it back to us. In fact, I went to him in the office in Parliament, took the form, and submitted it on his behalf at Yoko. I see. Guess what? From November 2017, we were never invited to the premises of Yoko. Then on the 19th day of November 2021, the 2022 budget was read with E. Levy in it. Then as ranking on finance, mm -hmm. he came out and said, no, the minority were not going to support the E. Levy. Now guess what? That was 19th November. 25th November, we were there when he called me, that Speaker Bagwin had called him that Yoko had brought a letter that they need him at Yoko. Four years. And my own sources within Yoko confirmed then to me that they had then, you know, taken the case as a cold case. Because from November 2017, mm -hmm. it was no longer a matter of interest. Then E. Levy came, and then Ato Fossin then opposed it at the ranking on finance. Uh -huh. Six days later, we were called that Yoko now needs us. So are you, are you saying I'm there's a link of Atofosin's position on the levy to the case? Yes, they never even got back to him when the payment were done. So now what happened was that we then went to Yoko. So speaker said, look, we can use his conference room mm -hmm. in parliament. So the two Yoko investigators came. I was with him. We then said, look, we want to rely on our previous statement, but we needed a copy of that previous statement that we gave them. What happened was that they didn't come with it. So while they walk, just after the speakers, one of the investigators had my number. He called me back and said, we have just received firm instruction that the statement now, it should be a charge statement. There and there. So I became alarmed. So we said, okay, we'll offer, but we'll rely on the previous statement. And the previous statement, Honorable Atufosin just indicated that I was just a deputy minister. I signed a letter on behalf of my boss. Before signing, the attorney general had advised us that they have received a notice of intention to sue by Big C. And then the attorney general stated clearly that government of Ghana will not have a defense if the matter proceeded to cause. Mm -hmm. And so that is the basis on which the LC was. And my boss knew. All the people in the ministry were aware. That was how it ended. Mm -hmm. I see. You see? So right from the beginning, I knew that there was no basis for prosecution. Had Setekwe had come to, to indicate? Wait. You wait. I'm coming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the police of Yoko invited Setekwe. Setekwe went to Yoko and offered a statement to them voluntarily. And I'll tell you how the judge resolved this Setekwe letter. And you will see how unfair Ato was treated. I will tell you something. Look, if you look at page 60, uh, uh, paragraph 65 of the judgment. Paragraph 65. Yes. Mm -hmm. It starts with, I note that Mr. Marquay in particular said in his evidence, for whatever reason, that the first appellant instructed Bank of Ghana to establish an LC. Now listen, at prior, when he was challenged on the use of the word instructed, and in my opinion, he chose to equivocate on it instead of accepting it. It is my view that this was unnecessary posturing because the first appellant did not use the word instruct by rather request. And you see, so Godfrey Dami coached this Bank of Ghana official. He issued a statement and took an oath and said the letter dated 7th August. Listen carefully. Mm -hmm. Ato Fawcett instructed the Bank of Ghana to set up the LC. So under cross-examination, we showed him the 7th August letter that from uh, paragraph one to the last, tell the court where Atufosin used the word instructed. He was fumbling. 
Who said, are you a, a, a man of considerable experience? Where did he use the word instructed? We use request. Now, you see, Godfrey, that may coach the witness to write in his witness statement. To... You see, he coached him. Yes, I'm, I will tell you why. Uh -huh. And the whole reason is that this man with considerable experience knew the legal effect of an instruction and a request. Mm -hmm. He knew that an instruction is an order, a command. You don't have a choice. And a request puts the person acting on it with the option whether to do it or, or not, not to do it. Mm -hmm. Or to do verification. And if he's satisfied, then he can proceed. Mm -hmm. He deliberately chose the word instruct to color the mind of the court against Atul Forsen, when he knew, in fact, that Atul never used the word instruct. Now, guess something that happened, and this is what the judge says. Under cross-examination by my senior Dr. Bamba, mm -hmm. this is what happened, and I want to read. So you agree with me from this explanation of the letters of credit that a letter of credit in itself is not payment, would you not? Answer, yes, my lady, but the letters of credit guarantees payment. Then question, the letter of credit guarantees payment subject to certain conditions being met. Is that correct? Answer, yes, my lady. So at all material time, this official that from Bank of Ghana that Godfrey Dami brought to court to come and testify against the Honorable Atto Forsen knew that the LC was not payment. Okay, so... Now, there's an important point I want to read. Mm -hmm. The same Marquis, listen carefully. Take a look at Exhibit 1 for A1. That is the LC itself. So we brought the LC itself and showed it to him. Now take a look at Exhibit 1 for A1. It has a column for applicant, does it not? Answer, yes, my lady. Now the applicant hearing refers to the entity applying for the letters of credit, does it not? Answer, mm -hmm. yes, my lady. Now... On the face of Exhibit 1 for A1, the applicant is stated as the Ministry of Health. Is that not? Mm -hmm. Answer, yes, my lady. I, I see. So, you see, so, and, and there's a reason so, why these areas you are reading are, are relevant, because this case borders on the on, LC. On, 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 on the LC primarily, on the LC. In fact, whether that was the, the LC only role. is an authorization or not. Or not. And... You brought the, minister, uh, the, the gentleman from Bank of Ghana, Markwe. When Markwe came, and under cross-examination, he started now admitting that contrary to the claim by the attorney general that the LC was payment, he said, no, it's only a guarantee. So, for instance, you, you have a friend who wants to go for a bank loan. Then you say that if he's not able to pay, you guarantee, subject to certain conditions, those conditions have not been fulfilled. Then you say, the fact that you are a guarantor, it means that you are paid. This is the case Godfrey Dami took to court and was entertained. What is even more bizarre is that this same guy from Bank of Ghana, under cross-examination, listen to what happened. Who signed Exhibit 1 for A1, which is the LC ESOP? Mm -hmm. Answer. It was signed by the controller and accountant general. I see. Question. So you agree with me that A1 was not the applicant in SB1 for A1? He said, I did not get the question clearly. So we repeated the question. The question is that A1, Honorable Dr. Ato Forsen is not the applicant indicated in SB1 for A1. No, my lady. Honorable Dr. Kessel Ato Forsen is not the applicant in SB1 for A1. As meaning he is not the one who signed Absolutely. the letters of credit. Absolutely. Is that, is the controller and accountant. Controller leader. and so, the deputy controller. So, so then how is this different from the, the role that Setekwe asked so I'm coming there. Kessela to force him I'm, to play? I, you, you, so you wait. So now, Godfrey Dami then brought Kwekwa Jimamenu, mm -hmm. the minister of health, as a witness for him. Listen to what the court said about him. Mr. Ajimamenu also testified that the letters of August 7th and August 12th by the applicant to request for the LC. I note that he initially said 
that the LCs was requested without the notice of the Ministry of Health. But remember that the LC had the Ministry of Health as what? The applicant, mm -hmm. remember. So now when we showed him exhibit one for A1, he started changing his mouth. But when he was confronted later about it and across his examination, he accepted that his initial position was wrong. In, in, now listen. Mr. Ajima Menu also said that LC was not a payment by guarantee. Now listen to what happened under cross examination of him. And you have also served as the chairman of the Public Accounts Committee Parliament. Is that correct? That is correct. So you have a quite a working understanding of how LCs operate. Is that correct? Yes, I do. Are you aware, are you not, that LCs are not payment in themselves, but are guarantees or promise of payment subject to certain conditions? Guess his answer. That is so. That is Kwe 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 Ajima, Ajima, the Minister of Health. Okay. So now the court, the court finally found this about him. It's interestingly, despite the very clear, unambiguous answers above, that an LC was not a payment but a guarantee, Mr. Ajima Menu gave a different answer on August 30th. So after we expose him and across his ambition, he now goes home and they tell him that no, when you come back the next time, that should not be your position because it will kill our case. Now listen to what he now said. When he said that per the terms of the contract, payment should be done by LC. Therefore, a request to establish an LC meant requesting for payment. Now listen to what the court said about him. My loss, due to the inconsistencies, mm -hmm. In the record of the evidence of Mr. Ajma Menu, I consider his later evidence as unreliable. This was by Justice um, uh, Akabua and places yes. no weight on it. In fact, this is our Minister of Health. He takes an oath and now begins to give inconsistent. So when I heard Godfrey Dami say he was going to court of appeal, I said, "What? Well, the Supreme Court judges are going to manufacture different evidence for him." These are your own witnesses. Now, you asked a very important question, so I can mm -hmm. wrap up here, about Setekwe. You see, Setekwe gave a statement mm -hmm. to Yoko. And he said this was voluntary. Voluntary statement to Yoko. So there was a day my senior said, look, he's engaged. So I should go and do the cross-examination of the investigator. And so it was the investigator who took the statement. So under cross-examination, I asked him, you recall Inviting Setekwe to Yoko, is that correct? He said, oh, that is correct. Mm -hmm. I said, okay. When he came, did you take a statement from him? He said, that is correct. I said, have a look at this statement. So I showed it to him. Can you confirm the signature at the bottom? Is that that of Setekwe? He said, that is correct. Was it the statement that Setekwe volunteered to you? He said, that is correct. So I told my lady that I want to tender it through him. The prosecution says, no objection. And in that statement by the Honorable Setekwe, he stated that the Ministry of Health requested the LC to be set up. Yes. Setekwe, in his statement to Yoko, which I tendered in, and, and, and the court remarked it here as SBIT, um, that's SBIT 5 for A1. Mm -hmm. just, just, uh, he did indicate that the Ministry of Health requested the finance ministry to set up the letters of credit. And it's in, it's in the handwritten letter that he gave to the... the, the, the to Yoko. To Yoko. Okay. Oh, I just so want to... Eventually, Setekwe indicates that... Now, it, you see, yeah. there's an important point I need to read. And I've heard Godfrey Dami put it out there. Now, the above leads me to exhibit 5 for A1. And the position of the prosecution and the courts... The prosecution submits that the finance minister did not accept ownership of the letters of August 7th and 12th and did not state in any point in the exhibit that the first appellant decision to sidestep parliamentarily approved means of financing and decision to authorize LC to be established contrary to the terms were made by him. The trial judge also was acknowledging that the statement came from the minister voluntarily stated that the statement had not been subjected to cross-examination. Interestingly, <laughs> so this is a minister of finance who gave a statement. It was admitted without objection. So now listen to the court. First of all, 
I have no hesitation in dismissing the prosecution contention that the request for the LC was reckless and criminal because it did not receive parliamentary approval. Now listen, the idea of parliamentary approval was never part of the prosecution's case. As okay. it never formed part of the particular set out in the offense for which the first applicant, with all due respect, it was an afterthought. And I will not place any weight on it. This is how bizarre the prosecution that Godfrey did. I call it persecution. And you see, Godfrey was driven, regrettably, by not law. Why do you say he was driven by not law? Because the argument is that he employed due process, you which coming. has now I just, I just, acquitted and discharged you see, your client. Do you have uh, paragraph 101? Good. So let me just you read it. Let me uh, just read it so that I, I 30 have seconds. Just 30 seconds so that Good. I don't lose Good. my thought on it. Furthermore, by saying that SB 54A1 had not been subjected to cross examination, that the first appellant should rather establish that he had authority to act. The learned trial judge is by implication saying that she had heard the prosecution witnesses, but must also hear from fellow appellants in order to decide. I am of the view that this is tantamount to shifting the burden on the first appellant mm -hmm. to prove his innocence. It yes. also implies that the first appellant will be found guilty if he had failed to explain that he had authority. Right. That is contrary to the law of Ghana. So, In fact, what happened was that you are telling the accused person that he should self-incriminate himself. Mm. Who does that? Well, so got the burden of, the, the burden of proof. Bizarre, be. And it is these bizarre witnesses that Godfrey Dami parried the five of them that he wanted a court to rely on it. And it was when he realized that it was becoming a mountain for him to climb. That was when he went to Justice Kulendi to solicit his help to get Japa. Uh, so on, on what grounds you, was the, the, the first... Um, so what you just said is very dangerous. Very! It's is, 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 is one that... Is one that to, who, yes! Uh, Supreme Court yes. Yes. So but, well, who has that's Supreme Court no. judge is what is no. out there. But he... The, you, you it's see, so bizarre! Le, le, you made reference to Justice Kweku Akabuafo's um, statement in terms of the position he took on this. In fact, this is a 123-page ruling. So we cannot put out of the doubt. What I have done is, for the last 72 hours, come through this ruling, tease out some of the issues that are plain English that you, our viewers, can relate. And then the legalese is what lawyer Edwigita McClough has put out there. In fact, if you look at paragraph 106, you made reference to, to it, counsel. Yes. Consequently, based on the evaluation of evidence led before the trial court, and the submission made on behalf of the first appellant, which is your client, I'm of the view that the prosecution failed to provide sufficient evidence that meets the threshold of connecting Dr. Kizatuforsin with the offenses he is charged with, that is, causing financial loss to the state, and relates to the ultimate of proof beyond a reasonable doubt. Mm. Continues. These reasons explain why I take the position that the trial judge erred in her application of the law in calling upon Dr. Kizato forcing to open his defense in respect of the charges in counts one and five. He continues that based on the evidence heard, in his view, no reasonable tribunal, and these are, in, you see, like, well, some of the words you're using by, by, by these judges who sat on this case. For me, plain English language, it communicates something. You see, it says no reasonable tri tribunal can safely convict on it. Also, in my respectful opinion, the evidence proffered by the prosecution against the third appellant cannot even be said to be open to two likely explanations, but to only one, which is that of innocence of the charge. This is mm. the case of Richard Jackman. Mm. Paragraph 155. This is Justice Kweku Akabuafu. Based on the above analysis and in fidelity to the law, I am of the opinion that the appeals filed by both Dr. Kizat Fossin and Richard Jakwa, third and first and third appellant, should succeed. In the result, I would allow the appeals and the ruling of the trial court dated March 30, 2023, calling on the first appellant to open his defense in respect of this case. He goes on to say, 
that also the call on the third appellant to open his defense in respect to the charge in count three is set aside. Let's go to the next paragraph 71. Paragraph 71 is interesting. Let's flip to the next. 71 says, interestingly, despite the very clear and unequivocal answers above that an LC was not a payment mm. but a guarantee, Mr. Ajimamenu, as the health minister, former health minister, later gave a different answer on August 30. That's what you referred to. Yes. 2022, when he said that per the terms of the contract, payment should be done by letters of credit. Therefore, a request for LC to be established meant requesting for payment to be made. Then he goes on. Can you go to My paragraph Lord, 93? Due to <laughs> the inconsistencies in the record of the evidence of Ajimameno, I consider his later evidence as unreliable and place no weight on it. <laughs> paragraph 76. It says evidence does not show that by authority, the letters of August 7, 2014, and August 12, 2014, the first appellant caused loss to the state or misapplied the property of the state. And paragraph, it goes on. And in I, fact, I would have wished you go to paragraph if, 90, 90, if, 93. If, Maybe if, let me just if, read it. Yes. Paragraph 93. Furthermore, I note that the prosecution referred to exhibit AL and submitted mm -hmm. that according to Eduma Zemensa, based on that memo, all the staff assumed or knew that the authorization came from first appellant and not his board. Council, therefore, in effect, invites this court to draw an inference from the evidence that the first appellant had no authority to write the letters at the center of this case. Now, this is where it gets interesting. In my respective opinion, the process of drawing inferences from evidence is not the same as speculating, even where the circumstances permit an educated guess. In my view, it is also important to point out that supposition or conjecture is no substitute for evidence and cannot be relied upon as the basis for a reasonably drawn inference in this case. The assumed facts for the inference must be taken from the primary facts for a proper and reasonably drawn inference. Now, this is where it gets interesting again. A reasonably drawn inference requires evidentiary foundation, which in this case is lacking, because no evidence was led to show that the first appellant had no authority to act. The facts relied upon by the lender counsel with due deference to him, are based on conjecture and speculation. I see. The issue of whether the first appellant had authority to act or not is a matter of fact and cannot be speculated upon. Hmm. This okay. is your attorney general. I see. Well, let, let's look at the other. Anytime we say it's a 2 1, viewers and listeners are not even given the details of the positions that the judges who were in the majority took in taking that position that <laughs> Dr. Kesel Atofo Singh and Richard Jakba should be acquitted and discharged. That's why I took some time to run through some of the positions taken by the judges who voted in the majority. Let's look at Justice Bright Mensah, who was also in the majority. He was part of the two who voted that, look, Dr. Kesel Atofo Singh and Richard Jakba should be acquitted and discharged. Justice Bright Mensah said in his ruling, if you look at page 74 of this 125-page uh, ruling, let's put it on the screen. It says, I have critically and soberly examined all the evidence led on record, both oral and documentary. The evidence in chief, each witness of the prosecution offered and the cross-examination of the witness by the defense counsel. And the second part of page 74 is where it's plain English language, so our viewers and listeners can relate. Mm. Upon a very passionate reflection of the evidence and arguments of both counsel for the appellant and for the republic, it is my respectful opinion that the evidence it's in its totality is so unreliable that no reasonable tribunal minded to do justice 
could safely convict upon it for varied reasons. Look at page 79. The conviction in the Rex versus Korea case was set aside on appeal, primarily on the grounds that the prosecution failed to call a material witness. The court explained on page 178 of, of the law report that the evidence of the witness would certainly have settled one way or the other, the truth or otherwise of the matter. There is that evidence on record in our present case that in the case of investigations into the matter, Honorable Setekpe is said to have volunteered a statement to the investigator. <laughs> And that's what you... Yes, the, the that's exhibit 5 for A1. In the case, as you mm. made reference to. Mm. Then let's go to page 80. It is beyond any serious dispute that the applicant in the LC application was the Ministry of Health. Yes. As the applicant and beneficiary of the LCs, it was the duty of the Ministry of Health to do necessary pre-shipment inspection to the satisfaction... No, to, be, to be satisfied... satisfied that the ambulances being imported met the required specification and standards. Hmm. It was not the duty of Dr. Kizar to force him to do so. That was Justice Brad Mensa. And in fact, uh, look, uh, let me just add on. something. You, you know, the contract so, was between Big C and Ministry of Health. Atufosin so, was not even a party. So no I, I responsibility see. was on him as far as exhibit AL, which is the contract was concerned. Okay. Meanwhile, in all these circumstances, he was called to speak as though he was the Minister of Health. On what so, responsibility see, was on see, him? See, the Attorney General has been speaking. Hmm. Let's, he, he spoke to Accra Bay CTFM, specifically in answering this question about the responsibility of Atto Fawcett. I want us to take a listen to him. Without the act of Mr. Atoforsen, which consisted of authorizing payments for the vehicles. The vehicles would not, would not have been important in the first place. And it was not even pressed to a request by the Minister of Health, as I've indicated. If, a ministry, if my ministry requires some vehicles to be, to be procured and, and whatever, I will write with all respect to the Minister for Finance, uh, attaching evidence of the exhaustion of the procurement process and, and all. And it is the duty of the Minister for Finance to inquire whether indeed there is basis for um, the payments to be, to, be, to, be, to be carried out. In this case, without any authorization whatsoever, the Deputy Minister for Finance on his own wrote for the service of the rest of credit. And it's not just a matter of establishing LCs, and it is not also, as, with all respect, as light as some people would want the public to believe that LCs are just for. Um, as just a guarantee for payments. The LCs themselves were the means of payment agreed under the contract. And if you look at the agreement, clause four of the agreement, it says the vehicles shall be paid for through the assignment of letters of credit, every couple of letters of credit uh, open in favor of the sellers. And that's exactly what was done in, in this deal, pursuant to the authorization of the then Deputy Minister of Finance after forces. Mm. Then, of course, the role played by Japan, Spikele. He is the one who introduced the company Big C to the public officers in question at that time. Without Japan's introduction, the government of Ghana would not even have go, gotten to know Big C. Apart from that, he profited 700,000 euros out of the 2.3 million euros that was paid under the transaction. Okay. And what kind of transaction is that? Is that you pay for vehicles worth 2.3 million euros and then an agent, a middleman himself, Profits from it as in the quantum as much as 70,000 euros. Well, so that's the Attorney General, Godfrey Yabu Adami, explaining why he's very well convinced about the role that Dr. Kesela to force him played in this. Reason why he, in his view, is convinced that there is a case of an appeal of this ruling at the Supreme Court. You know, before my learned senior counsel, I didn't call Kwekwajima Menu. I didn't call Mark Kwe from Bank of Ghana. Mm -hmm. Godfrey Dami looked at 32 million Ghanaians and felt that the people who would come and speak his case for him, Mark Kwe and Kwekwajima Menu. Now, you see, maybe, you see, 
Godfrey came into the case at a later stage. So he's not even abreast with what happened. Listen, oh, Kweku Ajima, his own witness, and across his nation, what he told the court. So you have a, quite a working understanding of how LC operates. Is that correct? He said, that is correct. Are you aware, are you not, that LCs are not payment in themselves, but a guarantee of promise of payment subject to certain conditions being met? Listen to his answer. That is so. Now listen to Marquis, mm -hmm. the other person that Godfrey brought to court to come and testify for him. Listen to him and across his amnesty. So you would agree with me from this explanation of letters of credit that a letter of credit in itself is not payment, would you not? Answer, yes, my lady. So the very people that you, Godfrey Yebu Adami, brought to court that they should come and make your case good, we're telling you right in your face that an LC is not payment, but a guarantee. Ignorantly, you are still parroting without shame on platforms. Look, you see, when you go further in this case, and like I told you, some of the things that happen, listen to what the Court of Appeals said. After referring to the essential element of the offense of causing financial loss, however, the trial judge did not provide reason for concluding that a prima facie case had been made against first appellant based on the element of the offense. My senior had been doing this for a while before I joined him. Mm -hmm. Now, he says, to that extent, it is my view that there is no evidence from the record that reveals a critical connection between the facts, the law, and the conclusion reached. Hmm. My brother, we do know. In fact, when we're in law school, the first thing they will tell you is that assemble the law. When you're assembling the law, you get the facts, you put the law, and you reach your conclusion. Mm -hmm. So it is the facts that you draw the inference. Now, on what basis? You have said the law that in Ibrahim Adams and others, the court set out the element you need to establish in the offense of causing financial loss. Then you attach the facts to the position of the law and draw your conclusion. Mm -hmm. And there's a court of appeal is saying by the majority that having said that this is what you need to prove, you just join to your conclusion that therefore, first appellant, then accused, has a case to answer. Where is the material connection None whatsoever. And, and that is why, if you look at the <laughs> statement that Tekwe offered, the Court of Appeal now says that there is no evidence that the loss was caused as a result of the omission of the first appellant, or that he intended to cause a loss to the state, mm -hmm. or he foresaw the loss as virtually certain and took unreasonable risk of it. There was no evidence that the first appellant foresaw the, law, the loss as a probable cause of his act and took unreasonable risk. Therefore, therefore, based on the record of appeal, I, I am of the respective opinion that there is a lack of logical connection between the evidence and the finding of the court. Logical connection. Uh, uh, so at it, this point, the conclusion is like fate, GDA. Okay, well, but the, the, I mean, like, Justice see, Alex Opokwe Champo in dissenting said he did not think that the, the trial judge decision has occasioned a miscarriage of justice. No, hold on. Hold on, I beg you, go to page and, 91. And, and, page 91. No, you, you, page 91. In, mm -hmm. in, in, in the decision of His Lordship Justice uh, 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 Ale Sopoku, mm -hmm. page 91, the first paragraph, listen carefully. Mm -hmm. He says in his judgment that the Ministry of Health failed to conduct pre shipment inspection in respect of the ambulances which were ready for shipment before payment was made as required under the contract. Mm -hmm. Question, uh, whose responsibility was it to do the pre-shipment inspection? Mm -hmm. Was it Atul Forsen or Minister of Health? Mm -hmm. So even in the dissenting judge's opinion, mm -hmm. he himself find at page 91 that there was a responsibility to do pre-shipment before payment to be made. 
whose responsibility? There is nothing like vicarious liability in criminal I, I matters. Now, now, there's something I want no, to draw your attention to. No, what, what, the second you, paragraph. He said, the Minister of Health, after Kwekwajima uh, Menu became the minister, he engaged the services of Silver Star Auto Limited, acting by so and so to conduct further inspection. Now, guess what? At the time BC won the contract, these were competitors who were, and then you ask them to do an inspection. Because remember that they believe that they are the Mercedes Benz distributors in Ghana. Yeah, yeah. So when BC won the contract, they were not pleased. Now you well, go and ask them to do an inspection of uh, 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 commodities or whatever that Big C brought. I mean, how fair can you be? Well, it's uh, like uh, asking another TV station to come and audit TV3, your competitor. Okay. This thing cannot happen in any serial jurisdiction. Thank you. Uh, uh, Edwin Eduji Tamaklo. And as I indicated earlier, we have some exclusive detail about where these ambulances in question are. And we will, we will put it on the screen as we go on. I'll show you. But joining us on the telephone, let's do this quickly, is Savia Kuji, who is also a private legal practitioner. He's the, he's the spokesperson for the Ghana Bar Association, public affairs officer. He's joining us on the telephone. Counsel, good morning. Thank you for, very much for joining us here on Key Point. Good morning to you, uh, Alfred, and good morning to Gordon. I could hear your voice, Gordon. They didn't pick my call. <laughs> <laughs> That's my senior cousin. Thank you. Thank you so much. He said I've been avoiding his call. <laughs> <laughs> he, will, he will pick your call now. But you, you, you took issue with the Attorney General's statement, part of the statement, which indicated his position describing the appeal court's judgment in acquitting and discharging uh, Dr. Kisla Tofos and Richard Jaqua as perverse and grossly unfair and erroneous. Why is that? Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. I must start by saying that we are not again that any general disagreeing with the decision of the Court of Appeal, not at all. But the manner and the choice of what is what we are concerned about. If you read that any general statement carefully, to us or to me personally, all he wanted to say is that I wanted to go on an appeal. The question is, was there the need for all those work before concluding that he wanted to go on appeal? Practice as I've known it, even telling a judge in the courtroom, our appeal against your decision is problematic. It can land you in problem. Normally, what we do is to say, that is the decision of the court. I, I respect it. I'll advise myself. If you have said this, I don't think we have had this use with it. Because we need to create the impression that the courts have been fair to everybody. Is it the case that because this time around you didn't go in favor, that is why such words are used? We may be tempted to think so. And that is not the kind of situation we want in this country. We must all believe in the system. You, do must not, or you may not always get it right, and it may not always be in your favor. In this case, for instance, there is an opportunity to even go higher up. So why use all this way? That is our concern. Because if we, the professionals, are using such way, what do we tell the new people if they use them? So that's statement, the concern. Yes, the point two of this Attorney General statement is where you took issue with it. And then reads in full, the Office of the Attorney General considers the decision of the Court of Appeal to be perverse in the quest for public accountability and the rule of law. The decision clearly is heavily against the weight of the cogent evidence led by the prosecution in substantiation of all the charges against the accused persons in the trial. So they are, the defense of the AG is that they qualify the use of these words in this context, that to the extent that the decision in their view is heavily against the weight of the cogent evidence led by the prosecution. They describe it as perverse and, and a quest to, to, as it were, not too good for public account accountability and the rule of law. 
Now, now I've read, was there the need to issue a statement after a judgment of this nature? What is particular about What is special about this case? That has not been his style. His one case is his own cases. Why this particular one? You see, what we're saying is that whether the, the, the judgment was against the weight of evidence or not, the public cannot make pronouncement on this one following his statement. It is only in a court of competent jurisdiction. That is why he indicated he wanted to go to the court of appeal. So it wouldn't change our position. I, I and uh, are we saying that when you are charged with offenses such as roughly constituting financial law, mm. you must at all costs be found guilty? I don't think so. The I court see. of appeal has spoken. He has decided to go further. That is his right. Just as that two forcing to have done. But must you use such work before implementing your decision to appeal against the, uh, the decision of the court of appeal? That is our concern. That's why our concern is. So it doesn't really solve the problem uh, by saying that uh, because uh, he thinks that the weight of the uh, evidence was against uh, the judgment was against uh, the or whichever way it is. Hmm. I, I, I don't think, you see, I, I, I don't even know what to say again, because it's a very simple issue. Why such way? And why in this case? I see. But you, you, you made a, an important point earlier. You said w w w you're questioning why the AG should have even issued a statement right after this ruling. Does, does it me, then... It was, it was, it was a ne a unnecessary, because personally, I... I this statement was unnecessary. The, 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 the statement was made with emotions. Was it was it was thinking. filled with emotions? Yes, he was being emotional to me. So you agree with those who make the point that the AG appears emotionally involved and attached to this case? That is my suspicion, because uh, I'm not sure the judgment was even out in a hard form before the statement was issued. Before up to now, I've not seen it. I haven't read it. I I, I could I could hear Bobby and. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Prinka reading it at uh, I think joining mm -hmm. or something, something like that. So for me, I think it should have just taken its time. In any case, issuing this statement immediately wouldn't have reversed the the decision. The right thing he said was that he was going to appeal. I see. And 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 and, and I I don't I, I really do not see why that word should be used to describe the judgment of a court. No. You, you disagree. As a lawyer, I've learned one thing. I don't tell another lawyer, you are wrong. I tell you, I disagree. Right. Because the moment I say you are wrong, I'm being categorical. I may not have known what went with your analysis, so I'll tell you, I disagree. I will not tell you, you are wrong. No. So, yes, you've taken clear issues with the AG's use of those words, perverse, grossly unfair, erroneous decision. You've described this statement issued as filled with emotions. You, you yeah. agree that he is emotionally attached and involved in this case. Based on all of this, there's some who no, have suggested no. that there's some who have suggested that should this be the basis for him being disqualified to speak at the bar conference this year, to the extent that you are not happy about some of these things he said. No. He shouldn't be disqualified from speaking. I know this is coming from my. I had my my good friend, uh, uh, good brother, Godwin, uh, say this. I think a few days ago. I disagree with with that position. What we are saying is this: going forward, we don't expect things like this to happen because, as lawyers, I keep saying we are leaders. So whatever we do, even our private life, people look at us and copy from us or learn from us. Don't forget, we have complained about certain statements made by certain figures, especially in particular, or for example, Mr. Mahama, in the past. AG was part of those people who condemned it. We also condemned it. You yes, understand? Sir. So as our leader, we don't think that in expressing this disagreement with the judgment of a court of competent jurisdiction, it should, it should be using such strong way. He can disagree. We, are, he, 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 we don't have a problem with it. Our only concern is that next time around, he should be very mild in disagreeing. That's all. I see. 
Just say, Akuji, thank you. But Lawyer Matic, people has a, a, a contrary view on this matter. Whether that, uh, and counsel, just a quick one. Yes, you, 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 you disagree with the GBA position on this? Lawyer Matic, people? Right, what? Hello? Yes. Hello? Yes, Lawyer Matic, people? You, you, you yes, disagree with the. Yes, sir. You disagree with the. Matic, people, you also there. Good morning. Yes, yes, he is. Morning, morning. Morning. Yes, you know, yes. say, you're asking about the AG speaking at the bar conference. Yes. Yes. Oh, he should be disqualified automatically. The AG is a disgrace to the legal profession. You know what he did in the team? It's not something we can get over. It's an office that he should have left by now. So let's not make any mistake. The AG has lost the moral right to address the bar. He shouldn't go there. The AG shouldn't step foot in Kumasi. He cannot address the bar. Not with that team. Not but, with all but, the but, 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 you know, Let's that leave team. that option to him. He should be sacked right away. And okay. we have not moved away from He should be sacked. His only really lack is that, you know, President Kufado from everything is weak on corruption. Of course, Kufado's okay. family is benefited from his corruption. So that's how he lacks the moral strength to sack right. Fred Dami. But Dami should willingly resign. Right. Because he has lost the moral right to lead the bar. He shouldn't deliver any speech in Kumasi. No, I'll walk out if he comes there. you walk out if no, the no, agent no, of no, I, I don't think it has got into that yet. You won't make mistakes. Between now and, uh, I, I, uh, how do you call it, uh, September, uh, is a lot of time. Let's be all happy. I see. Let's, so let's see, leave let, the option to him to exercise. Well, let, 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 let's see what happens. But Lama Tikbebo says he's going to work out if the AG comes in. But I'll be back shortly. No, I think we do not to work out. We all make mistakes. Okay. And then <laughs> life, life is a learning curve. Well, Savia thank you for jo joining us. He speaks for the Ghana Bar Association. <laughs> yes, okay. we've indicated quite clearly. I don't agree with the attorney general. But right, stay with me because after this quick break, I'll show you a video. I'll show you a video of where these ambulances in question are. The ambulances procured under this whole scandal, uh, sorry, this court case, and why we should all be concerned about what is going on as to what has to be done. Stay with us. We'll be back shortly after this quick break. But parents, are you considering what secondary school or university for your child um, in the, to attend to or help them discover their purpose? We invite you to join us at the TV3 Edu Fair at Alisa Hotel Northridge today, Saturday the 3rd of August. And this event will provide you with opportunity to meet representatives from the biggest institutions and make the best choice for your child's education. Admission is free and the fair is ongoing as we speak at Alisa Hotel Northridge. For more information, please call 053-2200927. 4281069. After this program, we are all going there. So join us. Stay with me after this quick break. I'll show you a video of where these ambulances procured under this case last to forcing Richard Jacquard case are as we speak. Stay with us.